In this lesson, we're going to take a look at special operators. The special operators that we'll consider in this course are the assignment operator, the bracket operator, and the function evaluation operator. Now, there are other operators that are kind of special, but um, these are enough for us now in this course. Now, the important thing to understand about these particular operators is they have to be overloaded as member functions. They cannot be overloaded as global functions or non-member functions. So let's start out by taking a look at the assignment operator. Okay, suppose that I am going to declare three fractions as such, and I want to make an assignment like this. That is, f is equal to g is equal to h. Well, the way the compiler interprets that is that h is going to be assigned to g, and then that is going to be assigned to f. So here's our definition of the assignment operator. Notice I'm going to return a reference to fraction. It's scoped as a fraction operator. Its name is operator equal, and it takes a const reference to a fraction object, which I will call source. And what am I going to do in this function? Well, I'm simply going to assign to the numerator and denominator of the calling object. And remember, with a member function, there is always a calling object. So I'm going to assign to the numerator and denominator of the calling object the numerator and denominator of the past object, which I've called source. And then I'm going to return star this. In other words, I'm going to return the calling object to or through this reference fraction. In that way, in returning the calling object, then I can chain the operation so that when the compiler executes this, it's going to execute the assignment of h to g. g is going to be the calling object first. And then when it executes the g being assigned to f, f becomes the calling object. So let's step through this and see how it works. I'm going to declare h to be 2 thirds. So I'll pass in 2 and 3, and the constructor is appropriately called, and 2 is going to be the numerator, 3 is going to be the denominator. So then I'm going to assign h to g to f. So in main, we have f, g, and h. h has the values 2 and 3 for numerator and denominator. When we execute this operation right here, g is star this. It is the calling object. When I execute, then g in main is the calling object, and h becomes the source. In the definition of the function, when I refer to the numerator and denominator, that's going to be for g, the calling object. h goes in for source. The source's numerator is assigned to the calling object's numerator. Source's denominator is assigned to calling object's denominator. Numerator becomes 2, denominator becomes 3, and then I'm going to return, star this, or return the calling object, which would be g, and that is going to then become the source, and f becomes the calling object in the next assignment. So let's step through that. Again, f is the calling object, and g is source. So the numerator of source is assigned to the calling object, and that becomes 2. And then the denominator of source is assigned to denominator of the calling object. And we've completed the assignment. So f equals g equals h is h is assigned to g, which is assigned to f, and that's how it works. In general, when you're defining the overloading of the operator assignment, then you're going to assign the members of the past object to the members of the calling object. And that's the assignment. We'll take a look at the other operators next.